<laughs> well, hello, Maud Sejournan. I'm so happy to have you uh, directly from Santa Fe to France, and you accept to do this interview in English. Thank you so much. Of course, I live here in Santa Fe. <laughs> ah, this is beautiful. You have a beautiful background behind you. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely magnificent. How did this come about? Well, actually, this is the wall of my office. And um, I uh, wanted to live in a very nice environment when I work. And I decided to continue the landscape that I see from my window. Mm -hmm. And a friend who is a good artist um, did that for me. And I love it. Every day when I go to my office, I love it. Oh, and you have a special surrounding. Santa Fe, I heard from many people, is absolutely magnificent. There's a special energy there. You have the yep. Indians, you have the nature. What is what is up with Santa Fe? What's so special well, about it? Tell us. <laughs> well, I think first there is something you cannot even describe. Mm. So mm. I won't describe it. You have to be here to know, to feel it. It's an experience. Now, besides that, for me, I see the beauty of the landscape, of the rocks, of the colors of the um, stones of and how diverse it is you have the forest when you go just a few um, kilometers or miles up and you have the desert and you have um, plateau and you have rocks everything is there i think it's wonderful it's and you, very have, the, you have the indians that are doing their little uh thing their traditions there's their their you, you're yes. anchored in, in uh, historical and in a, in a pueblo. <laughs> yes, there are uh, about 20 pueblos around here and all have their very unique tradition. Actually, there are five languages that I spoken around them and they don't necessarily understand each other. And they all come from a very old um, tribe within called the Anasazi who were in Chaco Canyon and that's why I love to go to Chaco Canyon because it's a canyon where there are ruins and still the spirits of the ancient ones who were there between uh, the 10th century and the 12th century I didn't even know that when I arrived here that there would be ruins mm. but what you're so, explaining and, what you're explaining in your uh, books also is that you, we have actually lost that those those rituals we have lost those traditions we have lost we're in a society that moves ahead at such a fast pace that we forgot some things that truly can anchor us can you tell us more about what is a ritual how that can transform our life and how, how can we use it in our lives yeah the indian pueblos continue to do their dance and their rituals and it's very important many people go to see that because they feel the loss in their own culture of rituals. Uh, I think many of us um, have been uh, brought in a way where rituals were misunderstood or not understood and they didn't like it. They felt, oh, I don't want to repeat a form that doesn't mean anything to me. That's why I always encourage people to find their own form to create their own ritual because it has to have a meaning for them. It has to touch them inside. That's what the role of the ritual is about, to be touched deep inside in our body, in our emotions, in our mind, in our spirit. So we are aligned, we are uh, one with oneself. Thanks to those rituals. Mm, so, what 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 is what is the, technically speaking a, a ritual? Um, what type of ritual can we practice in our lives, or that you recommend? Well, you know, Indians still do ritual that can last four or five days. Oh, and yes, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something that can take one minute every morning. Is when we get up go outside or look through the window towards the east, possibly looking at the sun, and just be aware that the sun is rising again. We are going to have a new day. We are going to have light and warmth. And we are going to be prepared for this life 
of this day and thank it. Um, often um, Navajo people would give a pollen of corn or a corn um, flour or like an offering for thanking. We can do that. We can do whatever we want or just have a good thought. And it lasts one minute. And That's in some it. of your, from my understanding too, in some of your um, uh, workshops that you do actually write in Santa Fe, you, you you have this other ritual of 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 literally going around a fire and burning some things that you want to get rid of, for lack of a better term, you know, get rid of in your life. What is that process? So it's really a letting go, okay, this is enough with this and now I'm ready to physically let go. Is that what yes. happens? Yeah, well, the, the uh, process takes a little time to know what we want to let go of. That's important. And then once we know what we want to let go of, we can do something that will engage the body. Because the body keeps all kind of memory and knowing. So if we engage the body, it will be really done. It will help our mind and our emotions to release what was a burden before. So, for example, we can do it with a fire. Fire is a purification uh, element. Mm. So we can start a fire and already prepare the fire together, which is a, an important part of the ritual, and then put in the fire what we want to let go of and know it will be transformed, it will go away, and feel truly the the transformation that it does. You can do that also using other elements like a, a river and put it in a river. There are other, um, in Thailand for example, every year they do a little, um, like a boat. Oh yes, with yes a, I've seen that. A yeah. banana, maybe you have seen that, yeah. with a banana trunk yeah. and yeah. a banana tree trunk and then they put a candle and flowers etc and they put it on the river and it goes and takes away all the things of the year. So, um, you know, you can find many ways to do it that will be meaningful to you. The important thing is that you feel it's done when you do it because of your action. And then what, from this space, what, what happens afterwards? Because it's quite a scary place or some of us are probably resisting to let go of this because behind is uncertain. How do you deal with this uncertainty? <laughs> well, sometimes you can be aware of what you would like to have instead. So you are like letting go something for welcoming and taking in something better, something softer, something that will be good for you. Mm -hmm. So because some people say true. some some people in in the process of creation say oh you know I'm I'm let me be the recipient of whatever you want whatever you know source wants out of me please use my body please use me or some other people say oh you really have to put your thought out there I mean how do we actually co-create a universe what is your view about this how 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 this mechanism works okay <laughs> Well, it's a pretty complex thing, but in general, there are three important elements. Okay. The first one is to be aware with our mind of our intention. The power of intention is huge. And intention is creating a clear direction towards something we would like to create. So it's really about creation. It's starting a movement where life will come in to take form. That's what an intention is. Which is different than imposing our own perception of how it should happen. It is different from an expectation. An expectation is, well, it's going to be exactly like this, with this little image like that, and this little fur here, and the red dot at the top. Yeah. No. We can be disappointed if we feel we are in control of the way it happens. Yeah. Because yeah. what we do, we start a movement, an intention, a receptacle, actually, a, a, a grail. So what will come and manifest 
will have a, a place to go into. Mm. So that's the first thing is the intention. The second is getting our emotional body involved. Uh, be really into it. And like, ready. Oh, it's like, oh, yeah, I want to have a new car, you know, just, you know, oh, maybe, oh. No, it's like, I really t want to create this business. I really want to have this thing happen. It's important. My life is going you're, you're to be... You're physically engaging into it. It's emotionally first. Emotionally. emotionally. Having enthusiasm, having faith, having uh, trust in yourself, in the universe, etc. Well, that's a big one. Then third, yeah. yeah, third, and I tell you what is in the way of that. It's all our screens and our obstacles we have obstacles but the third level is action because if we stay in the corner of our room in a lotus position waiting that everything happens without us doing anything no big mistake yeah. so we yeah. need to take action and actually when we are clear on our intention when we are engaged with our emotional body Things come naturally. You don't need to force anything. It's, it's natural. You just, oh, I check the phone. I call this person. Oh, yeah, wow. Synchronicity happens. Then we are opening a space. We are opening a space for synchronicity to happen, yes. And it's important also that we have the heart open to receive it. Sometimes people ask, 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 they get, 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 but they don't open their hands. They don't reach for it. It passes next to them. I give you an example. My book, for example, my, my, my first book, Le Cercle de Vie in French, uh, I met someone I did articles for, and he's also a publisher, and he said, we talked about articles, and he said, well, all this thing, you, you know, why don't you do your own book? And then we talked about something else. One sentence. And then I said, hmm, yeah, well, I have all these notes and this experience and this thing. Yeah, why not? So I caught, since he's a publisher, you know, I thought, mm, you know, and after he said, yeah, I'll, I'll see what I'll do with your book. I caught it. You know, I grasped it and I say, okay, there is a possibility there. And I worked on it. It just that happened, you know, writing was an everyday, you know, piece of work. Mm -hmm. And it took me actually almost two years to do it. But I did it. And finally, it's out because I heard one sentence that I grasped. So I didn't even think of it. I didn't even ask for it before. But I heard, I received it. And receiving is very important for manifesting. You are in a place of uh, openness, of being a recipient yes. for, uh, and at the same time you were giving, I guess, a lot. You were there in the present moment. Um, yeah, yeah. I took it like, oh, it's for me. I yeah, I can use that. You know, I can use that. So mm -hmm. I think we have. Lots of opportunities that come around us that we don't, we don't see. see yeah. And then the more you start seeing them, the more then you're present to it and the more life accelerates and the more joy there is. And as you say in your books very well, and that then, then life becomes simple and you're, you're pleased with pleasure. And then this, this planet becomes heaven on earth. Right. Because you are seeing more and more the beauty of things, the, the abundance of things that you don't have to measure in terms of material quantity, but it can be the little smile of a waiter when she gives the coffee, you know, and ah, that feels, you know, like we say in English, that makes your day, mm -hmm. fills mm -hmm. your heart. So, or it can be a letter of your son, you know, giving news or whatever, um, many things that we can give more value to changing values so seeing the intangible the invisible having more um value that 
what we paid for before. Yeah. Mm. And mm. you wrote a book, you wrote the, book the, the Intelligence of the, the, Heart. Of the Heart. Was it translated, was it translated in, in English? English. Uh, the Circle of the V. You, Le Circle de Vie. It's my book, not the, oh, pardon, the other one. Excusez-moi, alors je vais enlever parce que j'avais vu quelque part l'intelligence du cœur, mais c'était pas, c'était pas, c'était pas vous. Non. Alors ça devait être, ça, ça devait être dans les explications. Alors attendez, je vais repartir sur. So you 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 met uh, Don Miguel Ruiz. And you have actually worked with him. And can you tell us a little bit the experience of meeting? I mean, he's 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 the man. Talking about the heart. Yes, definitely. He's the man talking. Not only talking about the heart. He's the man of the heart. Mm. He's there personally. You you know that's why people want to meet him so much and connect with him. And his children now are continuing this tradition and this energy because um, he has integrated all this uh, Toltec mythology that he has uh, explained in his books that he teaches. And it is um, the manifestation of what he teaches, you know. And a man so. of the heart transforms other people along the way, don't they? He transformed your life. Definitely. I think so many of us are trying to change the world around us, to change other people, to change the context or uh, anything outside of ourselves. And uh, actually... The main thing is to transform ourselves, to transform our view, our perception of what is around us. And when we give to ourselves this love, this acceptance, then our view is transformed also. And also, before we can transform our view, we have to take away all the stuff that is between ourselves and reality. Most of us have <laughs> glasses. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we yeah. look at the universe through those glasses <laughs> that have been built by um, the uh, ideas, the beliefs, the shoulds, mm. the must, the education, whatever, of different uh, contexts, culture, etc., around us. And we have taken it without questioning because we were children. We had no way to not believe it. So we live actually with this terrible um, screen that is made of what is not ours, mm -hmm. what we have not created. So there is a time that comes where you need to question this and to say, do I want to continue to see life through these dark glasses? Or do I want to really see what is? Because when you take up this, what is, is beautiful, is loving, is magnificent, no matter what. So this is an extremely important thing to do for the greening of the planet, you know. It's not only about recycling or um, trash, it's recycling the trash we have in front of our eyes. And I think it's major to be able to do that and go back to our integrity, to our true self, that can be happy with seeing all this magnificence and don't need all this stuff, you know, that American life has a lot so of. So ritual, rituals can help us in that project? And do you, do you have any other tools that we can use? Well, yes. Um, actually, the tool is to be, to become inside a jaguar. Okay. Yeah. I, I like that. <laughs> yes. To be a jaguar, which is the best hunting animal. We need to hunt all this stuff, this parasite, because inside of these glasses, of this uh, screen, it's a living entity. Mm. All these beliefs, all these must, should rule our life. We are completely conditioned by it. We do every movement and action and thoughts almost are ruled by that. So it's a living entity within us. Mm. So we need to develop this connection with this inner jaguar 
which is this uh, attention very much in the moment for everything we feel, we think, we do, and have this jaguar behind us here that will say, hey, is that yours? Is that really your thing? Do you really want to do that? Does that belong to you, you know, etc., etc.? So little by little, we can take the, the layers off mm -hmm. and then see the world and then create the world as, you know, and as its image of what it is already, beautiful and abundant and loving. Oh, I love that that little uh, jaguar thing. It really, and plus it's exciting because it's an animal and then he brings that kind of energy inside. It's really, really inspiring. I had never heard this before. Yeah, yeah. so it's well, the jaguar. I, I know you do seminars all around the world, including in Santa Fe. Uh, um, and, and I will do um, actually initiation of this jaguar way and of this uh, uh, going to Chaco Canyon, which is very close where the Anazazi Indian lived in the 10th century. Okay. And actually they were meeting with the Toltec that came from uh, Central America because in Chaco they were meeting, all the tribe were meeting. So there is a whole initiation that is in place there and I want to take people there. Also, if they are far, we can work through the phone because I have a six months program. Oh, yes, yeah, that. that. I'm sorry? I saw that. Yeah, six months over yeah. the phone, and, and we can just. Uh, it's full, so, full conference call around the world? Right. You can call from all over the world, and we start once or twice a, a year, and we make a group because I think in a group you learn much better. You help each other, you learn the energy yeah. of a group. And you have instructions every month on which you are going to work to learn to be the jaguar and then learn to transform the prey that you got, the, the parasite that you got in, that was inside, to transform it as an ally and use that resource for yourself mm. and transform. And all what you learn during six months then, you can apply in your life, in your daily life, to create a, a life of love, no more fear, but awareness, mm. deep awareness. Mm. Lovely. Well, and that's I, amazing. I am so happy we got to uh, do this interview. You are very, it, it's been a pleasure interviewing you. You're definitely a, a, a person that lives from the heart. You're a woman of the heart. It, 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 I sense it. I feel it. It's a pleasure to interview you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.